everybody. Welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. You can get that on Amazon.com, or you can go to his websites, anabolicdoc.com, metabolicdoc.com, or the newest one, testo testosteronology.com. Yes. How do you spell testosteronology, guys? Okay, take testosterone. Take the E off the end, and then O-L-O-G-Y. Got it? Okay, here we go. Doctor, how are you, sir? What's up, Ron? You did another another outstanding video this week, Doctor. This was a biggie. Uh, it was called Steroids for Strength and Size. Uh, I'm changing that because strength <laughs> is what you're more interested in as a power lifter. I'm not that interested in it. I'm all about size, so I'm calling this Top 4 Steroids for Size and Strength. Um, so this video was not really, uh, that you made, was not uh, uh, an instructional video. It wasn't really for the bodybuilders. This was actually an educational piece for the physicians out there, right? Because I now I'm inundated with physicians and healthcare providers, the whole world exploding my office phone and my emails with how can they learn more about what I do and how can they be a doctor like me? Yeah. And, you know, you're trying to you're trying to help these people treat their patients better. It's a, you guys got to go to this video. It's, it's on its channel, Anabolic Doc. You're very passionate about uh, about I, the I, subject. Yeah, I, got, I got kind of I got really. You know, <laughs> My favorite part was when you said, do not turn them away. I, love I mean, that. Ron, <laughs> it's coming from the heart, Ron. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's because uh, you're dealing with a lot of patients. You've been dealing with patients for over a decade that have been turned away from their regular general practitioners who really just don't, they don't understand the subject and anything that they're not really educated about, they'd rather not deal with. So they don't. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, but, but you know, in the future, that, we're going to have a lot more. Hmm? So, so, but beyond that, Ron, which is you're, you're, you're on the ball and I appreciate your, you're very focused and you got that picture, but, but they do it with disdain. They, 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 they do it with some of them, some, not all, but some, they do it. I just heard of a, a veteran at the VA. God bless the veteran guys. His doctor was just downright illegally unethical and said, get the fuck out. Really? I Because now you're working with a doctor in the community on testosterone and I'm trying to recover the guy. And then he goes up and he's like, doc, I took your advice, my advice to be honest with the primary care doctor, which could be anywhere and, and happened to be the VA. And this guy just blasted him and said, Get see the door, get out. Uh, you know I don't know the uh, code okay. of ethics that you uh, you all agree to and swear to when you become physicians. But are you supposed to turn away patients like that, Ron? I'm just being now. So what I'm trying to do is, you know, I, I have to. I'm transitioning my gears over. No pun intended, by the way, yeah, Ron. Gear, gear. Yeah, yeah. So I'm switching gears where I'm actually going to start educating physicians. This is my whole rest of my life now. Mm, because, wow. I mean, come on. So a lot of it, half of it, I think, is I'll give them an excuse. I'll give you doctors and healthcare providers that are not in this world. I'll give you an excuse. You don't know it, so you're so, you're, you're, you're uncomfortable, you're, you're, you're not confident, and you don't want to deal with something that, that's medical that you actually don't know, so you mm. want to push it away. But I'm going to teach you with my online university, mm. I'm going to teach testosteronology, steroids. I'm going to teach about medical, all the stuff I do 24-7. Ron, yes. that's my next goal. I realized this about six months ago, and I've been underground opening up the companies and working on all the patents. And you're going to see huge. I'm going out. I'm still going to do what I do, but mm. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. No. We have a couple new a day. How am I going to keep up? Get a partner, sell franchises, or train doctors all over the world. Yeah, because every time I talk to you, you say, I just got this new patient, that new patient. Well, that's insane. Thing. Today's, in, Ron, I'm, we're overloaded. It's you awesome. I'm never, I'm never. This off, is this office 24 hours or no? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so much. I just have to train doctors. We have to train the next generation this generation of healthcare providers to understand what androgens do to a man. Right. So this video was a basic education because most of the patients that come in and see them and that have, are using or have used steroids, these are the four steroids that are most commonly used 
So you're trying to let these guys, these guys, guys and girls, these doctors, these physicians know. So the first one that you discussed for the doctor's benefits was testosterone and the basic esters of testosterone. Clearly the most common steroid of all, uh, that anyone's ever going to use in their so life. So you agree? You agree? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, it's the base. It's always the base. You, you'll hear occasionally some people doing uh, trend-only cycles, but for the most part, 90, 98, 99% of steroid cycles, by men at least, will have testosterone as their base. Uh, so you talked about the different blends, obviously, you know, we know there's there's different esters, there's cypionate, enanthate, there's the blends like sustenon, there's the the faster acting like propionate, uh, there's suspension even, which I haven't seen in years personally. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not a popular drug around the bodybuilding world anymore. I don't know if powerlifters are still into suspension. Um, so you let them know that the dose is used, that's the first thing, they're going to be a lot higher than TRT dose is going to be between 100 and 200 milligrams per week on average, uh, which no... You know, no bodybuilder is going to be satisfied with what he's going to experience on 200 milligrams. So you said 400 to 600 milligrams to start. Uh, I have seen, I've seen people use two, three. I've heard of four or five grams of test a week yeah. on very rare, insane kamikaze. I cases. just can't. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of tests. Who Where needs five? Who needs Ron, five? Where Ron, how do they inject it? Where do they? I, I've seen videos where it was like a turkey baster. You know, some veterinary syringe that they use for cattle or something. It's, I don't know, like a... Come on. I've seen 10 ml syringes. I think I've seen a, a 30 ml syringe full yeah, of gear. They have them. Yeah. Can you imagine putting all that where, in it? Where, where in the body? Where in the body? I guess the glutes. Because if you put it in anywhere else like the delts, you're going to have a big... Synthol. Gonna have synth, a, it's like synthol. It's going to look like ridiculous. You'll have a huge lump. Um, so, yeah. That's the common the common dose for bodybuilders. 500, 500 minimum, I would say, and it, the average is probably more like 700 to 1,000 milligrams a week, and guys will use more than that. Uh, common common things that they'll experience with that are things you talked about many, many times, gonosomastia, uh, hair loss, acne, uh, because it's very, very common to see aromatization with testosterone, especially when you're banging, you know, a gram a week or more. That, that's not a small amount. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, testosterone that's the first thing these doctors need to know that's going to be the base most of the patients that they're going to see that's the drug that they have used or are using among others but they're probably on test for sure next one you talked about is stacked very often is equipoise eq developed for mr ed the horse of course <laughs> now the power lift you said this is actually a lot more uh popular among power lifters than bodybuilders it's it's used more often for strength gains so, so test and equipoise is just what a lot of a lot of bodybuilders back in the day. You know, there's all the combinations, and next week's going to be with with the with the orals, which is going to be big. Yeah. But I mean, if you got good genetics, you're strong as hell as an ox anyway. You take test and equipoise; they feel otherwise pretty damn good, and they get strong as. That's just my opinion. Again, then we're going to go into the other ones. Yeah. But, but don't you, know, you agree, though, Ron? Don't you agree, though, that test oh, yeah. equipoise combinations, that's a strong... Come on, Ron. I always did very well on that combination. Uh, if, I, I preferred it over test and DECA, to be honest with you, uh, because it also had that appetite-boosting property to it. And, you know, I think a lot of guys, a lot of guys where they go wrong is they're training hard and they're using gear, but they don't eat enough. And if, if one of the things you're taking makes you eat more... You're going to do even better so than you would have done. That's a huge, that's why this video is blowing up because the comments talk about that, you know, and, and it's just amazing. So test EQ and I'm not wrong. I'm never saying this is a good combination, but that, that keep, it's so simple for guys. And then they, you know, they throw some orals in and whoo, you know, come, come on, man. You're going to get 40 pounds of muscle. I just in, realized there's a, there's an old folk saying like hungry, like a horse, hungry as a horse or <laughs> eats like a horse. So, you know, horses, uh, I guess horses eat a lot anyway, but they give them some equipoise, it's probably even worse. So uh, uh, an additional concern with equipoise that these physicians need to be aware of is, uh, in addition to the aromatization, is this polycythemia, androgen-induced erythrocytosis, Very which good. is thick blood. Does that mean they're producing too many red blood cells? So everyone knows. So this, you know, when I started doing this thing really focused about 10, like you said, 11, 12 years ago, you know, I started seeing the basic things come in, 
Doc, I'm on test and equipoise, test and DECA, you know, on and off the orals. And shit, man, my doctor busted me. Look at my red cells, doctor. Hi, what do we do? Uh, do I phlebotomize? So if you if you look at the classic drugs, like the ones that will lead to that 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 increase in red cells, which is called androgen induced erythrocytosis, you're right. It leads to polycythemia, which many poly many cythemia red cell increased red blood cell. Every guy, every single guy is going to have increased red cells. Is it dangerous? So that's when you start looking at how high it goes. It's based on the genetics of the man, how much he's on. Is he sleep apnea guy? Is he living up very high elevation? Does he smoke cigarettes? Ron. And then it becomes, it's, it's, we don't worry about toenail fungus. Can that sludge toenail fungus? Can, mm -hmm. Is that going to lead to what? A stroke or a heart attack? And then, so men that when they have strokes and heart attacks, and again, these are not 23 year old, 25 year old men. These are, these are 40, 50, 60, you know, 40 year old men and up, 35 and 40 with bad genetics. The, the moons line up. And one of the reasons is they're, they're, they're polycythemic. We, we don't know. We don't. This is why I'm teaching doctors. They're gonna, when you see a, when a guy comes in like me all day long, you see the red cells are elevated. You want to say to him, okay, sir, so I want to show you, I want to show to you, sir, that I know. So when the guy says, you say, sir, what do you want? And he says, testosterone, equipoise. Don't look at him like he has four heads. You say, oh, I understand. Those are the, these are the common one. Ron, you agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's yes. like doctors, these are the most common five, I, you know, four or five. So, and so, but you do see, we don't know yet why the, why does test and or more equipoise, Dr. T is going to chime in big on this. Mm. We, we don't, the answer is this, because I've talked to the top hematologists in the world. This is what I do. I link, I hook up men like uh, these men that I care for with real medical experts. And, and we try, now we're developing protocols. Why does this happen? Well, I, I'm, we're beyond the ethical side of don't do it, shouldn't do it. Okay. Well, we do, please let's heart attacks are going to be the concern. Mm. Well, let's see why, why does it happen? And we have to roll back to the basis of physiology, Ron. And Angin induced erythrocytosis. Please, guys, give me a lot of comments on this. I wish must. I got so much more traffic on my show, on on my place. When I should have more traffic on this place. You would think, right? Because <laughs> the guys are younger. You guys don't hate on the old. Don't hate. Stop hating. You're going to be on steroids. You're going to have something going on. I'm not saying you're going to fucking die, but please, just give some comments. Well, let me back up. When you have thicker blood, when you have too many red blood cells. Does that give you automatically higher blood pressure? No, no. no. Okay. No. Does it lead to blood clotting? What are the risks no. of having too many red blood cells? No, we don't know. Oh, so it's amazing. We don't know. Okay. No data. What, no data. Does, no does data. phlebotomizing reduce the no. blood? The, the sure it does. Case? Sure okay. it does. But it's but you're chasing it, and that causes its own problems. No. Watch my video on that. Equipoise and decadorabin cause thick blood, but is it dangerous? That's a video. That's a big video, man. I did that video. Okay, but the answer is we don't know. We don't. The truth is, from the medical, from the real traditional medical community, not the anti-aging community, that we actually don't know. We don't understand. Why do you think I'm doing research now, guys? Yeah. Okay. And I'm obviously passionate about it because your doctor, my doctor said, blah, blah, blah. well, he, where's the data? I, I, I'm a guy writing the reports. Where's the data? There's data for LVH. There's data for progression of heart disease because we understand it. Is it great data? No. We need. Don't you agree? We need more attention to men on androgens. That's all there's, I'm saying. There's very a uh, uh, what's the word? Paucity. I want to use that word lately. Very there's good. There's a paucity. Yeah, P A U C A of research. There's just you know nothing is very little has been done. All the all the studies I've seen have been so mm, so skewed. They One are way or another. so minimal. They're just small. And then God bless the guys doing them. But this is a big future. Ron, things are good right now. They're, they're using like six or eight guys, you know, and that, that's not much of a sample we group. We need to do massive. This is a huge epidemic, Ron. Come on. Okay. Let's roll down the hits. Our top story tonight. Next is Deca Durablin. Boy, Deca. Deca, the classic steroid to stack with test. Test and Deca has been like uh, peanut butter and jelly for bodybuilders for 40, 50 years. 
you know, going back to the Arnold days, even before that, they all <laughs> deco. It's a it's a classic. It works peanut so butter well. And jelly. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly. It's test it and deco. Test and deco. If you can't grow on test and deco, you know, it's like people get very fancy now. They have these stacks of forty different drugs. Well, maybe 40. they have a lot of different drugs, and they're trying to get all fancy and you know take this an hour before you eat and take this uh, two two minutes before you work out and. If you can't get big on test and deca, big and strong, you're not gonna get big and strong. It's 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 the classic. Isn't it works. true? Ron? Isn't it true? I mean, it, it works so well. That that's that's why it's so popular. It's cheap. It's easy to get. You know, these guys are looking for things like Mastron and this and that, and they're a pain in the ass. If you can find them, you don't expensive. You know, if it's real, but there's plenty of deca out there. Um, so you know, and just like uh, just like Equipoise, common doses start at around 500 a week typically range between 500 and 1,000. I don't hear too many people doing more than 1,000 milligrams of each, but while we're on, I got to back up on the equipoise thing for a minute. I know I'm all, I'm, as usual, I'm all over the place, scatterbrained. <laughs> but I got a, I got someone's off-season cycle that a coach recommended that they use because you can't say do this. You have to say, I recommend this. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, so 200 milligrams of test cypionate every other day. Not so bad, right? That's 600 milligrams of test a week. Uh, I'm going to save the equipoise for last because that's the most alarming. Uh, Nandrolone phenylpropionate, which is a fast-acting DECA. It's a, a faster act ester. 150 milligrams every other day. It's 450 milligrams a week. That's not too shocking. Um, uh, what else do they want? HGH. Oh, they got them on aromacin at 12.5 milligrams every three days. Human growth hormones, subcutaneous, one IU in the morning and four IU, 60 minutes pre-workout. Who affords it? Who, who has the money for this? Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's a whole other show, I guess. Okay, now the equipoise. 800 milligrams every other day, which would be 2,400 milligrams of uh, equipoise every six days. Um, Tast equipoise deca. Yeah, that's a lot of equipoise. Those are my top three. But nobody, and I mean nobody, needs 2,400 milligrams of equipoise every week. Maybe you if you're like 350 pounds. Of, huh? Who did that? Do you know the results of the person who did that? What happened? I don't think he started it yet, but this is a 190-pound athlete. This is not some monster. This person isn't even 200 pounds. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be watching closely to see what happens. Um but that was I had to I had to back up just to Ron. That's I, fascinating. I wanted you to fall off your chair and you're still sitting. I, I have, Ron, well, I have I have but I have a I have a gamer chair, you know. So it's well. I'm, right. I'm, I think that's the same chair my son has in his room. Yeah, it's I think it's the same Ron, exact I chair. It's it's designed so I can't. I you see I went back. <laughs> yeah, because video games, you know, you might get all excited. Okay, so we're back to Deca. I'm sorry, sorry for interrupting. So Deca is unique in that it suppresses testosterone. Which test does, which they all do, but it does not replace it. So if you're on only DECA, which we've had, didn't we have an argument with a bunch of people on your comment section? Bring about this? guys, the DECA only guys. Who are these guys? I don't know, he was very, he was very passionate. He was very upset with your, uh, with your. I just your want opinions. how many guys are living on DECA only? I just want to know about it. I, I just don't see how it's sustainable and how you're. You know, what would happen to your, your test levels after a year of only well, being on DECA? I see guys. I've seen guys who come in and they're on DECA only or they're at the end of it or something or not on real test or something. And their test is super low. Mm. Yeah, because I remember that one guy, because you know, there's always one exception to every rule, right? Just like there are eight, there's like a seven foot tall Chinese guy somewhere in China. You know, most of them are like five, five, three, five, four. But uh <laughs> This guy was claiming my sex drive is great, this and that. You guys don't know, you don't know where the doctor is a moron. Is he even a real doctor? That's what I, I love this stuff. I love the I real doctor. I love, I love the real doctor. Um, but yeah, because DECA is infamous for leading to DECA dick. Uh, and that's why it became a very standard protocol over the past, to my knowledge, maybe it goes back further, but about 10 years ago, I heard people start saying, if you're going to use DECA, you have to use twice as much testosterone to balance out the negative effects of DECA on your uh, your erectile function because um, it will it, it's notorious it's notorious for destroying your not so much libido I think it's just your actual your 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 uh, erectile ability well it's it gets, it's, it's going to be both but libido is the brain you know thinking about sex 
And if you if you're not if you're blocked and your your brain is your libido's bad, the signals that go down to the you know so it, it becomes because none of this stuff none of these guys have vascular disease which is you know older men who need Viagra. So Viagra none of those it's all going to be in the central nervous system. So but I understand your piece. There's there's libido then there's the ED. But these all these young men it's all going to be central nervous system based, and the, the, that drug decodurabilin. That, that very nor 19 that class of drug but not trend which is we're going to talk i'm sure we're going to go oh, yeah. is 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 amazing that it just suppresses t and for a lot of men but not for every man you get that very poor sexual experience called deck a dick mm. now is that is that remedied by doing what the bro science guys say yeah take, and balancing yes. out doing okay yes all right, so yes. guys, take take a lot more tests than you do DECA. Yes, or the two to one or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a, this is fascinating. That's why I'm studying it. It's fascinating. I want more scientists. Come on, guys, young guys. Come out. Come with me. Come to my university and study with me. Let's go. And so you also pointed out to the doctors how it's used typically. This is typically an off-season bulking drug because DECA does give you a lot of retention and puffiness which pre-contest, you certainly would not want any of that. It's but, not really an estrogenic drug, is it, though? Very interesting, isn't that? Yeah, but so I don't know why it causes so much water retention. Because, but, it, because, be, because it does have progestonic. Boy, let's get the bro science going, guys. Let's get the bro science. No one knows. So, But if you use it with testosterone, what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's uh, it, you blow up. Yeah, and I, a lot of people love it because it does, it does seem to increase the synovial fluid in, in yes. the joints. And your joints feel better. I mean, I know a lot of guys, older guys, these are guys over 40 that are on DECA all the time, along with tests, yes. because they're so banged up. They have arthritis. They have all kinds of joint pain, inflammation, and it does. it's very helpful in that regard. We just need to think about, but then the side effect is, you know, it causes hypertension because mm. you're, you're all blown up. It's that's called intravascular edema. I'm always going to say the lay term than the scientific, and it can devastate the lipid panel. And it can cause other issues, not to mention the red blood cells. See how comp look how complicated this is, Ron. Yes. So guys on test and DECA, it's like, yeah, my doc, it's it is better, you know, for my show. You're right though, it's amazing. But I just want to study. I want orthopedic guys to come study with me. I'm on my board. I'm gonna have an endocrinologist, I'm gonna have a hematologist, cardiologist, a psychiatric doctor, I'm gonna have nurses, I'm gonna have orthopedic surgeons because these are all doctors that we have to all work together. The future, we have to we have to embrace this. I'm not giving it a blessing. I'm just saying we should embrace it to really understand it. I mean, come on, Ron. Now we have medical marijuana and recreational marijuana. Opi this is not an opioid. This is not like an opioid, guys. No, let's just try this could actually bring, bring help and 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 healing to people. We have to understand the mechanisms, right, Ron? Yeah, and I think we've talked about it before. With, I've talked about with both you and Dr. T as far as, you know, Dr. T takes a very minimal dose of DECA every week with his test. I think it's like 50 milligrams a week, something something laughable, to you know, for, for me. But apparently that's enough to give him the relief in the joints and the, the benefits that he's looking Amazing. for. Amazing. And there's been, there has been some studies on this. Hmm. But like you said, they're not, they're not, really well done studies and they're now very old so we need to really look at these drugs with all these common i'm done i mean just i just yeah. i'm so yeah, every time i see one of these studies and i look at the bottom of the year it's like 1992 1994 oh, my true, Ron, it's been true. a while the politics has been so bad all right everybody you guys ready our number one steroid <laughs> for size and strength the number one steroid for this is the most beloved of steroids now is taken on legendary mythic status trend um i gotta teach you how to pronounce it though you're saying trembolon i believe trembolone 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 Trem okay yeah i might have said trembolon i get it, you? I <laughs> well you know that wasn't uh that wasn't a big big drug in the in in your world back when you were uh, part of that so trembolone it's it's the most i i believe gram for gram it's the most powerful injectable steroid you can use for many, many years before we had Trembolone, you know, uh, the Europeans had um, a pharmaceutical version. It was made out of France. And what was it called? The old Par uh, Parabolone. Parabolone, which came in a, a 176 milligrams in an amp. And, you know, guys like Dorian Yates talked about they would use one amp of that a week, and that was plenty. 
Wow. Whereas now you hear kids, and I say kids, guys in their late teens, early 20s, a gram of Tren a week, two grams of Tren a week, more, because, you know, more is better. Uh, very, very powerful drug, very harsh drug. You've called it the devil's juice, I believe, on many occasions. It just is. I mean, this is stuff that guys have told me. Yeah. Um, so very, very effective at at building strength. And, and it, people don't think it's a size-building drug, but that's mainly because you don't get any water retention. So you're not going to see a big gain on the scale. But like you've said, dry, dry gains, graininess, vascularity. Uh, it's become so, so well known for those properties that if I or anybody posts a picture on Instagram where you're in really good shape with veins and everything, you'll always get at least a comment or a private message saying, how much trend were you on there, bro? Because they assume that that look is only attainable with trend. Ron, if you take test, I have the guys to prove it. If you take test and trend combinations with equipoise, not to mention decadurable and not to mention some orals, growth hormone, that's it, bro. Those are the biggest, strongest son of a bitches in the world. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, test so, and so, so, so test and trend is that's the synergy. Yeah. And that's why some, you know, one of the comments was, you know, God, doc, please, doc, please let me help you. Trend is not a size and a, 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 not a size drug. Bullshit. It's not a size drug. And some guys came in there and said, the doc is talking about all these drugs being added to test. Right. <laughs> So uh, for strength, the I take care of this top strongest man in the world. They use only two drugs, maybe through an oral, which we'll talk about next week. Yeah. They use test and trend. That makes the strong. That's the strongest guy. They tear pecs off their bone because they're so strong. Yeah. If, if you can't get stronger in test and trend, you know, you weren't meant to be a lifter. I'm sorry. Go find another another it's activity. <laughs> so uh, it's also notorious for really amplifying your sex drive. People become these raging sex fiends, basically. Uh, you wanna, you, you see any kind of a hole when you're walking by a tree or something and you get turned on. The wind blows, you get turned no, on. But you know what, isn't it true though, Ron? Some guys question that. I'm like, how, who's questioning this? I'm not, I'm not questioning it. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's embarrassing because, you know, as an adult, Pat, you're not 15 or 16 anymore. You're, you shouldn't have that reaction around uh, attractive women where you're like sniffing and grunting. And But, you know, you talked about a pastor that you treated oh. who used trend, which was kind of a, I think there were some comments on your video of questioning. They thought you made that story up because it sounded so ridiculous. But this guy ended up in some other state with multiple sexual partners. And yeah, his life went to shambles because his sex drive well, on trend. I've I've heard this many times for all, you know, for my patients that may watch this, you know, I mean, the, I asked the man if he's a pastor and he, he allowed me to say it. I said, would you mind? I don't want you to feel isolated. He goes, doc, you're not saying my name. Uh, yeah. Please spread it. He's also a man of, he, he's a man of the Lord. So he's like, doc, this is true. This yeah. happened to me. But I've had so many other men tell me that they've wrecked their life because they've cheated all over their wives and like, God. So. Look at this double whammy. You get this crazy sex drive. Your sexual performance on trend is you're a porn star. You're just a porn star. You, you can perform so much better. Wow. And then you run into the issue of when you stop taking the trend, now you're not that, you don't have that performance ability anymore. And you're freaking out. You don't have that crazy libido. You don't have that sexual performance. So what do you do? You got to go back on trend. And you're going to have to be on, yeah. you're going to have to be on trend forever, which would do probably not advisable from a from a doctor's point of view to stay on trend indefinitely correct ron i call it chasing trend mm. they have to, they, they, testosterone won't even work imagine test won't work wow i mean that's, it's a, that's a rough it's spot pretty, it's pretty rare it's pretty rare yeah and i mean you you, you said in very rare cases men have become impotent ron i have trend. men and i and again my men that they're watching this because it's not just i take care of the whole world not america yeah. just america I, my, you know, I'm not, I'm not making, I'm not disparaging and belittling. Please, my these men I take care of, they know that that they're fully impotent. Wow, fully impotent. Full, and, and they're only four, they're they're in their forties. Wow. They're fully impotent, and we've run every combination of TAST and and HCG and aromatase inhibitors and selective vests. And I'm working all over the, you know, with other doctors all over the world that are more more progressive than this goddamn country is which pisses me off 
Mm. That's why I'm changing that. Doctors, yep. you, you want to, you think you're a progressive country, America? Well, show me you're progressive. Mm. So, sorry. So, no, sorry, no. For the, sorry for the sidebar. So the truth of the matter is when you use trend, this changes something in your chemistry. And if you do a little bit of it and you do a cycle or two and you're like, holy shit, that was crazy. You know, uh, just be careful. So, and I obviously say to you, I'm actually saying and advertising to young men, 13, 16, young, they're, they're boys, young men, 13, 21, maybe, you know, uh, don't even do any steroids, please. Because if you do, tr Ron, what we're talking, this is why it's so exciting, this show. Mm. I hope we got a lot of views in this show. My God That's knows my, my show is blowing up, but yes. it's like, I'll, I'll still do this for you guys. But it's like, it's, but it's, it's just like crazy. So all these young guys on muscular development, guys, man, <laughs> please, man, if there's going to be one of you out of 10 or one out of four, 25%, if you use enough trend, get the comments going. I'm not a bullshit guy, Ron. You're, you, you, Ron, let me, okay. You've used trend. Sure. Not, obviously not that much. When was the last time you mm, did? I had a bottle. Jeez, uh, oh, it's within the last six months. I couldn't tell you exactly when, but, but I had but, a I had a bottle. When you, Gron, please help us. When you come yeah. off, do, do mm. you recover? I mean, how do you feed? I mean, is it you just go right back? Well, I don't go back to trim, but I mean, I'm always on test anyway. No, but so, but but I mean, so, but when you come off, okay, you're always on on test. Yes. You're you're a blasting and cruising guy. Yes. So, so you're gonna blast up on tr on trend. Yep. Things are gonna change. You're gonna be super hornier and stronger and all this kind of stuff and harder and all. And then all of a sudden you come down. Can you share this with us a little bit from your personal I mean, experience? Um, you know my my libido will go back down, which doesn't. I'm actually grateful. I'm actually kind of relieved when that happens. Because, you know, it's it's not a good thing. I'm a married man. It's not good to be staring at every hot piece of ass that, that walks by. It's obviously, you know, it's it's a recipe for disaster. So you have a beautiful my, wife. You have a beautiful wife. So yeah, it's like so my libido goes up here on trend, then it comes back to the normal level, which is high normal anyway. But it doesn't go no, this is the, the million dollar question. It doesn't tank down for a while and you it can't probably it probably does for a couple of weeks, but I don't even notice. Oh, yeah. So some guys, some men, Ron, you're lucky, Ron, because your brain is just, your brain doesn't take the effects. Hopefully in the future, you won't have some delayed effect. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to share something. My family seems to be very, very resilient. I had an older sister that passed away. Uh, she was an addict. And she, had she been like anybody else, she probably would have been dead 20 years before she actually did die. She just kept bouncing back and bouncing back and kept a, you know, like the old Timex, she, she took a licking and kept on ticking. Wow. Uh, so, you know, great God willing. Strong. Yes. Yeah, strong. Genetic, have... Great genetics for survival or for resilience to, oh. to bad effects of drugs. You know, I should no, knock on wood. Not, you're on it. You, 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 you're, you're, you're talking about something from a biochemical molecular sense that some people are very chemically sensitive. Ron, I have guys that can't take baby doses of testosterone because they have panic attacks and anxiety. Ron, yeah. I got him. I talked to a man this morning. We can't put him on testosterone. He has to come off and live low T. It's so sad. This guy, and if he's listening now, you know, we're doing the best we can for the, so how rare is that? You're, you're like, I almost want to say chemical dump site. Okay. You're, so you're, you're you, you I mean, can, just to throw it again. I mean, I told you I've done, I've done steroids for all these years and, and I've rarely can, ever used an, uh, any aroma, any AIs and I never got gyno. So this is, I know we transcended, we, we launched into Ron a little bit, but look, thank you, Ron, for being, because you're, you're, you're teaching the world, this, the guys are mouth, guys are watching this with mouth strap, mouth drop, like how come Ron can do that? It's, it's biochem, you just said it and God bless your sister. And it's, my heart goes out to you for your suffering, for your family, your mother. Thanks. So the truth is, Ron, People have different chemistries. Mm. Guys can take two grams of gear and not have one pimple, not lose a bit of hair, right. and not get any gyno. You're shaking your head because you're like, it's true. Every, you, you can't cookie cut this stuff. I have men that can't, they can't even take testosterone because they have panic attacks. Wow. I mean, this is, a, I said, sir, you're chemically sensitive. And I've done every permutation combination with aromatase inhibitors, selective vessels, the modulator, HCG. I've used anti, anti dopamine drugs, carbergaline. I use Dostanex. I'm using antidepressants. I'm using Ron. 
Yeah. I do anything it takes for my patients, anything. And this man in the end, two years with him, yeah. great dude. I was a great guy. He said, Doc, man, I love you, man, but I, I, I just can't take it. He's been off for five months, seven months, and his T, his T is low. You know, it came back a little on paper, a little like 300. And he's like, Doc, I don't, man, I just can't, I can't, I can't go on. I can't mm -hmm. go on. I can't go back on testosterone because he ends up in the ER. Wow. This is the truth because he has, it's not his fault. And I'm not missing the aromatase inhibitors and blah, blah, blah. I mm -hmm. mean, I've tried every goddamn combination for two years. It's just very rare. He's a yeah. rare guy. The average man could take all these drugs, right? And you, you bodybuilders, let me just make this point. Guys that take steroids, how does this guy take, how does this guy, men that can tolerate a lot of steroids, that's what, that's one of, that's one of the criteria to yeah. become a steroid user. Of course, a pro bodybuilder, you have to have great genetics. You have to train hard. No one's putting them down. You have to have incredible discipline, focused life. You have to be a monster. And then you have to have one last characteristic. You drug have to response. We're done. And yeah. no, a in addition to drug and tolerance. tolerance. Yeah. But We're it's done. both. Ron? Because it's both yeah. because a lot of people can take, you know, one guy can take two grams of steroids a week and get very little results, you know, a lot of side effects and very little muscle gain. And you'll see another guy with, Clearly, something different genetically about him, something about his molecular makeup receptors. I don't know what that God. guy blows up. Same exact drugs. Boom. And, and that's I saw a guy today that's that's uh, you don't want to say he's this big. I mean, like he's a small guy. And if you look at the drugs, you know, test, trend, equipoise, the usual host. And he's just he just he's like, Doc, I'm your guy. It doesn't have any receptors. I just don't. I'm just not meant. But now, unfortunately, his brain is shut down and his sex drive is horrible. So he has anabolic steroid induced hypogona. So, but it's like I see other guys that come in and they have low T. They have low T from steroid use. And I look at him, I go, holy fuck. When this guy goes back on testosterone, he's going to be a mu So muscle tissue is not just, not just testosterone. Mm -hmm. It's genetic. There's so many molecular barriers and enzymes, Ron. Mm. So... Getting back to trend for a second, you did say it's probably the worst steroid as far as causing ASIH, anabolic There's steroid no induced hypoglycemia. There's no question about it. There's no question. No one's going to argue that. It but it shuts I no... down your axis faster than any others, more completely uh, than the others. Yes, of course wow. it does. It's the There's no free lunch isms. No free lunch isms. <laughs> no, free... Ron. But the truth. I mean, anything that's going to be that powerful, and I I learned this from thousands and thousands of men that have told, now we're putting it into data. But Ron, come on, test and trend. Mm. And then and then guys coming off that versus a little bit of test, a little baby dose of Anivar. Come on, Ron. Yeah, I mean, this is why, you know, we, we're called haters all the time because we're, I, I if I hear about a young guy using a gram of test and a gram of trend a week, and I I tell them that's alarming and you don't need that much and you're, you're gonna do a lot of damage yourself, they think I'm trying to prevent them from making gains. They think Shut I'm, up. yeah, they think I'm just a hater and I don't want to see them succeed and reach their goals when they could be reaching their goals on half that amount or less. Come on, Rod, it's true. Without, without doing as much damage. One quick question about the, the uh, sexual dysfunction from trend, though. Is it is it libido? Is it in the head? Or is it erectile dysfunction? Or is it no, both? No, no, no. It's 100% in the central nervous system. Okay. has nothing to do with the corpus calvinosum, with the okay. penis itself. Okay. Because these are young men. They don't have vascular disease or unless, let, let me back off on that. We don't know. It appears like, well, first of all, we, we don't know. Let, let me go back to being a doctor. We don't know okay. because what's the, there's no goddamn data. Mm -hmm. Now I love the bro science guys coming up with their thoughts because it's all we have now. Right. It, what's going to happen is it's going to go into the brain. Now trend only cycles actually can guys can live on it on, even though it's a nor 19 drug, right, Ron? Yep. But it's not decodrobalin, is it, guys? Right. So it, because of those two functional groups, I'm not a biochemist, but you can watch my video on the, I, I go over, I just, I'm, I just read off of the chemical structure just for the scientific aspect of what it is, and then we move forward. But no one's going to understand, maybe, maybe Bill Llewellyn, because he's more of a, a chemistry guy, you know, a, a graduate, he's a graduate student, I think, with a graduate degree. He's not a PhD, but he certainly knows biochemistry better than I do. Yeah. So in the end of the day, the clinical effects, no one knows more than me, is that 
it's hitting the brain receptors that make the sex drive area for the man. And it stimulates it so strong that it starts to shut down, called down regulation. And then you get, in addition to that, there's a, there's a kind of a crude word called, I call apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, which I don't, I'm you, and for all the scientists, please forgive me. So it, it, it's, you're, you're hitting an area so hard and so sternly, to, depending on who you are, that that level just shuts off and it goes to sleep. And then it, for some men, Ron, it just doesn't come back, which means it's permanently lost. Wow. And that's it. No one can argue me. No, there's no argument because it, it doesn't happen from shoe polish or, 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 or if it's smoking one vape, which be careful with vapes. Mm. I mean, so it's like it, it's and it's not from a little bit of testosterone or little anivar. Come on, Ron. We're talking crude stuff here. Heavy duty doses of test and trend. You do trend. You're going to be hypersexual. Hope you don't wreck your life personally. Um, I mean, but then trying to come. Who doesn't want a doc? I do have guys that 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 I don't give them anything, but I do their labs and I watch them. Of course, because I care for them. And they're like, Doc, you, you can't give me the levels of test. And I have men that live on test and trend. Wow. And you know what? I try to protect their hearts because, you know, Ron, it's not going to be, it's not, it's not, uh, their, their, their hearts are going to, come on, Ron, it's not well, going to be. I mean, you have patients that are on trend all the time? I have some guys, unfortunately, in the last 18 months that do consults with me, and they're not my patients per se, okay. but I talk all over the world, Ron. Right. I talked to three guys today, I don't all over the world, Australia, Europe, I mean, Africa, South America. So not just all over America. I do this. I use I use Zoom and I use FaceTime and Skype. So I, I have men that have told me, Doc, you know, um, I, I really have to live like kind of like Doctor T, where he's doing a little baby dose of Deca. He these guys are doing baby doses of Trend, and they do it in addition to test to maintain the libido. This has been going on for maybe a year and a half. I do a consult with them. You know, this I don't prescribe anything to these guys. And I just, I just listen to them and I try to give them, maybe you can go get an echocardiogram. Maybe you could try, you know, trying to DOS, you know, we talk about all the bro science and then, and then, but they, they are, there are men that are worried that they're living on guys, please come forward. If you're on test and you're on trend and you need little doses of trend to keep you going sexually, forget muscle building. This is a sexual thing. Um, can we come forward on that and have a, have a form just on like, can't get off, you know, uh, chasing trend. Ron, mm. it's out there now because, like you said, these young, so many men are exposed to it. They're, they're naturally are going to, we're coming up, we're, we're selecting, we're selecting out for men that are so sensitive that they, they can't come off. They, they can't come off and just have that normal. They, they crash down. Guys say the word crashing to me. Doc, I crashed off a trend. Yeah. They use the word crashing. Right. I mean, you, you're going to see more and more because. Trend use has escalated so much just over the past, you know, I never heard of it until early 2000s, I would say, is when people really started getting into trend. And uh, by the end of the, by the end of that decade, it was just rampant. Everybody had to have it. It's part of everybody's stack, like all the time. They use it off season. They use it pre-contest. It's, it's just works so well. It's, it's I, so powerful. That's why I put it for one of my top powerful intermuscular steroids. With the other guys there, and your trend video is killing it, dog, killing it. Your trend balloon, yeah. I mean, people Just love trying, I'm not happy, guys. That I'm happy that it's. Uh, I'm happy that that I'm getting airtime and physicians and healthcare providers, mainly nurse practitioners in this country, are mm -hmm. coming seeking me to for my educational guidance, and they're going to be joining my society. Cool. Well, I hope at the very least, a lot of them are finding out about your videos and their. They're getting a little basic primer and education. They're, they're, they're amazed. These are people that have nothing to do with steroids, but they agree that they're seeing these patients in their clinics from, from Utah. Just, let's talk about America, Utah, to Kansas, to New York, to L.A. And they're like, they're, they're, I don't want to turn them away, doctor. So I've learned about these drugs, and I'm what, what, very interested. They're, they're not steroid users. They're just regular people, but they're nurse care. They're, they're health care providers, and they, they, they don't. Want, and just sending them to an to an endocrinologist, that's not the answer. The endocrinologist doesn't know either. Right. Okay. Well, Doc, let's wrap it up because we have part two coming next week anyway. This has been the top four most commonly used injectable steroids. 
And these are definitely classics, guys. Uh, Test, Equipoise, Deca, and Trembolone. By far the most four common drugs you're ever going to find in use uh, in, in the U.S. and I imagine around the world. So, They're Ron, just... you agree with me. If that was your list, would you? Put, that would be your list? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I would. Uh, I'd have to. I, I, even if I hadn't watched your video, I would have named the same four. Maybe. I'm curious. Are you going to do the, are you gonna, are you gonna do four orals too next week? Yeah, Ron, wait. You just wait. I know. I'm not going to speculate. I'm going to leave. I'm going to be surprised. But I, I'm going to make my list ahead of time. And I want to see if your list matches my <laughs> list. It probably send the will. list to me. Ron, send the list to me today. I'm going to send it right do, after we hang up. <laughs> send the list to me. And then what I'm going to do is when we're online next week, yeah. I'm going to read it. Let's see, Ron. I'll do it right after this. So people, there'll be there'll be a time stamp on it and everything. This okay. is going to be great. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it so much. Please pick up the doctor's book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, at Amazon.com or at his websites, AnabolicDoc.com, MetabolicDoc.com, or TestosteroneNology.com. Also, if you want much more clear, annotated videos discussing these subjects, go to Dr. O'Connor's channel on YouTube, Anabolic Doc. He sits there. The, it's broken down. Is Alex? Alex is your guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's got the. He's got everything typed out with the timestamps there. It's very neat and organized. Unlike me and the doc, we ramble. We have a good time. But uh, you know, two different styles. I think it's good to have good to have a different styles. We're uh, killing it. That's it. Thank you so much, doctor. And I'm looking very much forward to next week's episode. But we'll start that off to see if you and I lined up on the on this oral discussion. <laughs> All right, Thanks. everybody. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, and everybody. Thanks for watching Anabolic. Ask the Anabolic Doc. Please subscribe to this channel. Hit the notify uh, bell thing so you know when we have new videos. And we appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.